Hello viewers, welcome back. Um, I've been spending a lot of time looking at this particular part of the page. We've run out of most of the rest of it. Um, and um, yeah, I'm going to make a mobile out of this, seriously. Uh, so this is the machine generated version. Um, and you'll see this orange line here. It does go down the inside of the end, but not, it needs to be a little bit further away really it's actually on the line but you'll notice that the a and the n and indeed the top are all out by the same amount uh, and so actually at london should be diagonally down in this direction a wee bit and that would leave this then just nice this is slightly off you can just see that the orange line doesn't go through the apex of this and this blue triangle should be slightly bigger I, I, the point that i can use i need to be able to use points that i've already defined is not quite in the center so that blue apex will be even slightly further away but it's so close that you, you know you know you've got an eye isosceles triangle and an equilateral triangle and they have a coincident vertex on the vertical i think that's pretty good now i'm really interested in william asplay because it always always looks a little bit weird and now we now know why there's a gap in the a and we also know why there's a gap in that s because this our vertical on our newly discovered kepler triangle uh, goes straight through there and we know why that full stop is a funny shape because it's got a pyramid on the top and um, we've suspected that the m is sloped i think it's sloped more than the 30 degrees but it seems to be different from these but um uh, what exactly is going on now you'll notice if you chop out inside uh this triangle we get m in a swoop and I think that this cut is supposed to go vertical so that we've got a better four, but that's obviously a four. Uh, so good luck. Um, now, there's a line that goes straight through that L. It doesn't seem to come from anything, but it goes, that L is at 25 degrees and points to there. Um, I think that's just sort of enforcing the, so there's nothing there's any particular geometry on 25, but it's, uh, it's just, uh, showing that these are not the, these are not at thirty degrees, and therefore there's this there's this difference here. I I, I guess, but it's 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 um, it's making that uh, you know look at me, but also the W appears to have an eighteen degree line which goes through the middle of the T. We don't normally do that, um, but um, it does seem to fit that reasonably well. So what's going on? Well, uh, it turns out there's a 36 degree line from either end of this rule, which hits the six, about three pixels, I think, north of where I'm predicting, based on the center line and the circle, where the center of that six is. And there's also this very suspicious line through a rectangle that is the, uh, the dot above the second eye of William. And that 30, that is the machine generated 36 degree line. Looks like it's a score, doesn't it? Now, if that's at 36 degrees exactly, then this is a reflection of that. And what that means is that those three distances are all the same. And uh, that's not, there's no corroboration up here for, for that, but geometrically, that's what that means. That that, that that fits perfectly. That's not a, a near. Uh, um, I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't fit perfectly with where the circle hits the six, but it's so close we don't care. But what's drawn there is a 36 degree line. Um, <clears throat> so if you can come up with uh, some pretty geometry that we can sell, then fair enough. But I'm not, I'm not quite sure what that's supposed to be doing other than saying that the angles here, the angle through the T and the angle through the dot on the I are very pentagrammy. Okay, so I'll have a quick look at this. Uh, so as you can see, uh, it appears to be in the wrong place slightly. Uh, this is just a crude blow up of that, but I, I, I took this side and looked at how far that is from there. And then I just copied that green arrow to those and uh, uh, yeah, they're all they're all out slightly uh, to the left, and um, uh, they're, they're they're up by a distance too much, which is the distance that the rule is on him. He, he's put it on the rule, and he's got the centre line slightly wrong. 
Uh, so now this is just a slide from the previous presentation with our new 30, 60, 90 Kepler triangle. This is Kepler's 21 degree SN 1604 supernova line that goes straight through that dot there uh, and then hits the Shakespeare uh, line <coughs> just on the corner of that A there. And I managed to see just by hand that this was fairly close and just this this was obviously doing that so i was happy with that but this is the machine generated version uh here well, it's just the same picture but these two here are crops from what's come out of the machine and that is how close the intersection on the t is which is ridiculous isn't it uh, i mean it's just an accident these things do happen it's whether or not he's highlighted them and he's highlighted that one and he's highlighted this one this one's a little bit further apart uh, but it's still near enough it's, it's it's right in the middle of of the, the monkey's head and this is where the 45 degree line hits the comet line which is uh, sorry the, the 60 degree line that's, that's that's going through the monkey's head if he's positioned this bust such that if if we drew the red line from there, it would go down the back. So uh, that's a fairly small piece of evidence if you've been following how he actually does this and what the, what the marks are. <clears throat> so we now have four connections between the circle and uh, the Christmas tree and everything at the north, uh, you know, the, the square stuff. We've got the yellow lines that define the base of the pyramid. And then we've also got the t where the town cross should be on the phi triangle. And that kind of nails down this. We haven't got any freedom left now uh, um, uh, in how that is generated. But then we discovered the 60, 90, 30 triangle, meaning that a 21 degree line from the origin point of the entire diagram <coughs> up to uh, the triangle, and that will intersect there on that A, uh, will come down here uh, and hit the, hit the circle at a 90 degree angle, um, and then back up there at 60 degrees. So that's the third one. And then the fourth one is that this has got to happen, and we've got to have that blue triangle section of the pyramid there, of the, of the pentagram there, flipped over and fitting just nicely into the bottom of this diagram. <coughs> Isn't that weird? So, trying to get to the bottom of how he's made these other two things happen uh, is, um, is going to be interesting. Right, that's all the lines so far. Ooh, you know, and as you can see, th you know, you get, you get multiple coincidences, uh, but he hasn't marked them, and you have to look at what I mean. That, that, that's a particular one. Uh, it means nothing. It's the, it's, it's the intersection of the diagonal, the pyramid, and the comet line. Right, but the point is that this, the, everything on here came out of a machine. All I needed were two points. The point, the, the spot next to the G and the imprinted dot. And in principle, that will draw the whole thing. Now, unfortunately, we are slightly out here at the base, the circle is a little bit too short and we're a little bit too far over on the other end. And it's obviously near, but it looks good, doesn't it? But it's not, it's not good enough that I will get the kind of outstanding accuracy on here that I've got, unless I just adjust it a millimetre at either end. <clears throat> so that's what 235 and 2665 are. They're readings actually from where those flowers are of those, of those expositions, but that's it. Six numbers is all that is used to produce every single line on that diagram. And, uh, you, know, you know, I say, so what? Uh, I <clears throat> but it, we are testing a model against what's on the page. We're not trying to draw lines. We're not moving lines to go onto pages. We're changing models. So they come in threes. We've got the word puzzle, we've got the geometry, there are numbers. And the thing is that there's so little mathematics in 1600 that we know what these numbers are going to be. Uh, they are there. Um, it looks a bit daunting. The main problem is going to be getting the data set accurate. We need to know exactly what, I need to get captured exactly what is in the ASPLE 
Uh, and even if you've got a data set that says it's right, it probably isn't, um, unless you've been running algorithms on it. So uh, uh, more news as we get it. Uh, I need to go and uh, chase the Huntington up. 